Okay, uh, first of all, thanks a lot to Guillaume Pommier for lending, his, lending me his computer, otherwise I couldn't have done this presentation. Uh, and welcome for uh, which the presentation that probably has the longest title. I didn't make it on purpose, but apparently that's what I got. So tutoring software development students to streamline Wikimedia Commons flow from a Digicom export plugin to a WordPress embedding plugin. Now you can breathe. So uh, I'm going to talk a bit about this project, which is awesome if you don't know about it. So this is Wikimedia Commons, a multimedia library of the Wikimedia projects. It's all free, there are 13 million files, and I could talk about during hours or all the awesomeness that it is, but just look around it and you'll see how great it is. Um, I don't know about you, but I've always wondered what, why is, what does that logo mean? Uh, I have no idea. Apparently it was one of the uh, Wikipedia logo leftovers that was reused for, uh, I struggled on meta and archives and I couldn't find anything about it. And actually, uh, when doing this, I actually made some sense out of it. I'm not sure how much bullshit it is, but uh, <laughs> this is what I thought. And so you might wonder, what are the main processes uh, on Commons? The main, um, you know, the processes that we, we, how we, what we do with media. And on that you all are on the round. Can you see it? Maybe not. Well, there's an essay by Martin Dammers, user of Multichill, which is quite inspiring to me. And he argues in his presentation that there are three main processes on Commons. The first one is getting content, and I think the arrows really uh, represent it. The second one is curating content, so it's all a red uh, circle, but it, there is lots going on inside. Imagine us, you know, cold fusion in the sun or something. <laughs> and uh, we got reusing content, because we're not only about gathering free content and putting in weird categories, just like facing left or stuff like this. Uh, we also want all the old world to reuse our content, and that is the challenge because all these processes are broken in some way or another. Uh, I don't know if you've, uh, for example, getting content, which means basically uploading. Uh, it got way better in the past few years, thanks to the uh, Upload Wizard developed by the w Wikimedia Foundation, but it's still a kind of a hassle. And about reusing content, uh, it got better with the, you know, now you've got big buttons, uh, reuse this media, and they say, uh, yeah, you can, this is uh, an image by Pierre Salim, it's under Creative Commons, blah, blah, blah. So it got better, but it's not really, um, it's not that great yet. And I think one of the problem is that there is a huge disconnection between uh, comments and the rest of the software world. For example, if you want to upload pictures on comments, you basically have a choice between the upload wizard, the crappy old form, and uh, the Wikipedia library in Python. And that's probably it. So, and if you want to reuse media and comments, well, you can't. We have no API for that. So. Uh, I, as, um, as my day job, I work in a research laboratory, and which, which is coupled with a university. And one of my colleagues, one came to me and they say, uh, yeah, I'm doing this software development studio projects for my master students. I need everyone to submit projects. It was kind of, you know, I never have uh, enough projects for all the students. and got maybe 200 projects for 60 students, whatever. And he said, do you have any projects that you might want to have some students to work 200 hours on it, a software development project? I said, well, I'm not sure about my job, but I, I do know a website that could use some software development students. <laughs> and so this is how you explore students. <laughs> so uh, when I thought about what I wanted the kind of project I wanted to do, was the first one was no media wiki. Uh, why? Because I suck at PHP. Uh, that's basically it. So I couldn't tutor uh, the students properly. And also, there is. Um, if uh, you want to have something to be done in the media wiki software, it has to be, after that, reviewed by the Wikimedia Foundation. It was at the time, also, I, I don't want to get you know, <laughs> smashed by the Wikimedia Foundation people. <laughs> My understanding is that it got way better in the past few months, but I, d I didn't want to add this extra complexity on a, f or on a four month project, uh, which I think is fair. Um, so, no media wiki. Uh, the also part is also I wanted to solve this, this disconnection I talked about, so I wanted to do some other, uh, other software. Uh, the next one, I wanted to do flexible uh, projects. Why that? Because it was the first time ever that I uh, suggested a uh, software pro uh, soft projects for software students, sorry. And I had no idea how difficult the task was. So the idea is that, well, I ask them this, but if they do only this, it's okay. And if they do all what I ask in a week, I, I still have some stuff left to have them do. So was the idea. And the other one was I didn't want to have them uh, work from scratch. I wanted them to be able to build upon uh, existing solutions. 
and I came up with two projects. The first one is about Digicam. Who in the room knows about Digicam? Oh my god, that much. I, I, I never heard about it before. Actually, I heard about it during uh, Guillaume's presentation last year with Kimenia, because actually Guillaume also tutored software students, uh, aka exploiting them, to develop uh, a KDE library to interact with uh, MediaWiki software. And he, started to, he had them started to uh, uh, use, uh, to develop a plugin to export to Wikimedia Commons from Digicam. So in a few words, Digicam is uh, a, a software to manage your uh, photo library, and it has lots of features uh, that um, rejoin Wikimedia Commons needs. So for example, you can describe picture, you can give a title to your pictures, obviously. Uh, you can describe them, you can geotag them, you have uh, author and uh, license and copyright information. So it would be awesome if you could just, just get that, say, send to Wikimedia Commons and it's all done. And it wasn't the case. So the, pro the aim of the project, yes? If you have a new camera and you have Ubuntu, uh, your only solution is this. It is, is it? Okay, fair enough. Uh, well, in the, in the uh, so uh, this is what projects I came up with. So I want you guys, I'm sure you all take it with your, got your laptops. So I figured you, always, you want to look up the URLs right now. So that's why I put it in them now and not at the end. So it's fine if you just look it up. Uh, and this is uh, developing a GCAM plugin to allow exports to the multimedia library Wikimedia Commons. And strangely enough, some students were crazy enough, or maybe they thought there wasn't much work for that, to pick it up, and I was very glad. Uh, I guess I will make a quick demonstration of the Digicam uh, software. So uh, this is pictures uh, all by Guillaume Pommier. And uh, so if you go to experts, yeah, you can, you can export to a crazy amount of uh, uh, of uh, web services such as Flickr and Facebook and everything. But there, and there was a way to export to Wikimedia Commons. Uh, in the, it was not in the main trunk. It was, it was not in the proper release, but it was also in the development uh, repo. And it was kind of crappy, because there, uh, there was no way to, uh, uh, well, the, the, the page that was generated was not properly formatted. Uh, there was no license. There was no way to add categories. So the idea was to solve this. Uh, I'd like to make a diff between uh, before the students and after the students, but the fact is that you don't really see uh, how much they worked if you just see, okay, they changed two buttons, uh, what's the deal? But in fact, it's way better. So, uh, we are behind a proxy apparently, so upload don't work, which sucks, I'm sorry. But trust me on that, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh crap, I, I had to select a pic, I had to select a picture. Oh, KDE. <laughs> yeah. I'm not working on Mac. Uh, uh, don't insult me, please. <laughs> I'm working on Ubuntu. Uh, so here you go. And yes, actually pulled all, t all the informations from, uh, so yeah, I didn't show that. But Guillaume actually put a title to his capital picture, which is, this is my nice title, a very nice one, Guillaume. It's uh, very useful for comments. <laughs> and he also, put it, he also put some tags, it's like Washington DC, US capitals, which make more sense, thank you. And where does that go? Oh, did I? Uh, oh yeah, no, ah, oh. <laughs> crap. It's off the screen somewhere. Yes. It's I did. Thank my assistant, Guillaume Pommier, for his, <laughs> where, where does this go? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, well, way too big. But anyway, uh, can I just, KDE. Uh, <laughs> and as you can see, uh, the date was pulled up from the EXIF metadata, and it was formatted in the uh, ISO, I don't remember what format, which is used by Commons to get internationalized in whatever long language you've never heard of. And so the, the title was used as a description. Uh, there is actually a way to support multilingual, uh, multilingual tags in Digicam. So the idea would be to extract the English description and the French description and wrap, wrap them up in the language templates uh, used in Commons. It's not done yet, but that should be a way to do that. Uh, and the tags were pulled off and suggested as categories. Obviously, uh, the philosophy is not quite is quite difficult. Different between, for example, we don't we wouldn't add a category for. Washington DC on the on, uh, capital picture because we would only add the uh, capital 
category, which would be included at some point in buildings in Washington or something. But it doesn't matter. The idea is that we can suggest categories, and we should end up with less uh, uncategorized files. And if the files was geotagged, the latitude and longitude will be also extracted. So if you, <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, and here you can actually uh, connect to something. So I didn't test it before, but obviously <laughs> it won't work. I'm sure of it. This is one of my, uh, uh, how do you call that, stop puppet? Uh -uh, obviously. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's because you have to actually add the wiki for some reason. Comments, uh, HTTP. You can add wiki if they are not in the list. So <laughs> if you want to upload to, I don't know, any any media wiki. Comments. Dot Wikimedia. Dot org. Just read for me because I can't. API. Dot PAP. Yes, you have, to, you have to give the API. Uh, okay. So comments. Can you log for me? Please. Oh crap. Anyway, uh, <laughs> must trust me on that. So you put the author, and you also choose your license. So yeah, that's not. In case of ergonomics, you know, software development students uh, interface probably not the best thing. But you can you can choose a true license, even public domain, whatever CC zero. And you also have an option if you want to resize your picture and put less quality on comments. Why would you ever want to do that? But yes, it's you would. Okay, so apparently that's a feature that's very wanted, and you're glad of it. Okay, anyway. For, okay. Uh, so, and uh, since I don't have, I actually have, uh, where is the, um, yes, category, uh, just some pictures I uploaded at home. Category uploaded with keep your uploader. That's it. Yeah, but it's not really DTCAM, it's part of the, uh, uh, did you uh, keep plugins that are used by many KDE software. And there you go. This was the picture that was uh, uploaded by my, uh, yeah, I co-tutored that with Peter Patrol that you might remember him from one of these Google Summer of Code a few years ago. And this is the picture that was uploaded. So you've got description, you've got the date, it's own work, you've got the author, you've got the license, and you've got categories, Battle de France. Awesome. I'm running way out of time, so I really have to speed up. Um, <laughs> And the other one, ah, yes, everybody knows WordPress, right? It's a, a blog, uh, something used to blog. And this is uh, s uh, the idea I was, the same thing. There was a, yeah, there was a prototype developed by a Swedish, uh, Hey Krannen, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, hey Krannen? It's Dutch. It's Dutch, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Dutch people and Swedish people in the room. Uh, okay, so uh, you've got the URLs. Uh, to actually uh, be able to look up files into Wikimedia Commons and add it automatically in your blog post with all the appropriate uh, copyright information. And uh, I suggested to students to, uh, hey, have a look at it and maybe you could just expand it. And they come back to me and say, it apparently doesn't work anymore in the latest uh, WordPress release because between this time and now, uh, there we, they went from two point blah, blah, blah to three point blah, 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 apparently, and it didn't work anymore. <laughs> and the students wanted to do some stuff. So I said, I'm fine with you uh, starting up from scratch. And yes, it was, uh, it was CMS plugins because I couldn't figure out if it was going to be long or not. So if they had time, they would have done it for Joomla, for .clear, for Speep, for every content management system that could be around. So I do have a demonstration. Uh, yes, so this is what my, uh, I, I made that WordPress install just for this occasion. Ah. <coughs> so, post a new. Thank you. Here you go, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let's make something better for the records. Hello, Wikimania, yeah. Uh, and hello, here you've got Wikimedia Commons. There you go, and you can search. So uh, there's, uh, the students were a bit confused with the Wikimedia API, so they used uh, many different things. And the first one they used was the uh, query API. And basically, it only just lists uh, the images that start with the uh, requested uh, term, which sucked if you just, it's not good. Uh, so this basically just make a common search. Uh, it's just the same. So it's as, it's as good and as bad as the Wikimedia common search. And if you know it, you know it's bad, but. <laughs> Anyway, so let's look for something. Yeah, Jimmy Wells. Oh, come on. Should I use it for Larry Singer? <laughs> 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 
There you go. <coughs> so it's uh, and yeah, they they definitely want to uh, look up some. Uh, they definitely want to talk with the uh, hackers because their API are not optim optimized and it takes quite a long amount of time. So we've got lots of Jimmy pictures around. Which one do you want? Thinking. <laughs> thinking. Which one is that? <laughs> oh yes, Jimmy worth thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you can choose a resolution. You can. This is based on the actual WordPress uh, interface. So it just and you get a few few more links. So you can change the title, Jimmy Wells. Uh, yeah, just w let's call it Jimmy Scratching because I think that's what he's doing actually, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, no alt text. And uh, here you can look at. Uh, and here is a license. So this is, is pulled up from the Wikimedia Commons templates. And if there are several licenses, you've got every one of those, and they are listed. Even even crappy license like GFDL at 1.2, if you want to reuse something with that. <laughs> uh, and the author is pulled up too. And the legend, so let's put Jimmy is thinking. <laughs> yes, he is. And they give you the link. So, and here it is, because uh, uh, the default um, different thing is to outlink the files to, common, to comments, which is fine, it's authorized, no problem. But there's also an option to actually download it to the WordPress install. So for example, if the file is renamed on comments, which should not happen, but it does, uh, and the link is broken, it doesn't, the hot link doesn't work anymore. Uh, there's a bug open for that, which is kind of a media wiki model. It's not, there's an app for that, it's, it's a, there's an open bug for that. And, um, and you can insert the picture on that. So yeah, oh wait, crazy resolution. And let's publish it. There you go, and view post. So hello Wikimania, Jimmy Scratching says hello to you. And we've got a crappy watermark on that one. I thank you a lot for this choice. And <laughs> this is actually a link to the actual comments page. So there is a link back to the source. I'm Yes, it does work. So you can look it up for more information on comments. And you also have, so Jimmy thinking, and the author is given, and the, there is a license, and you actually have got a link to the Creative Commons uh, deed, which is mandatory if you want to reuse uh, pictures. I thought that it would be possible to have things in uh, captions on WordPress. Uh, uh, yes, if you, want, if you actually uh, uh, look at it, uh, the choice of the student was either to use short codes in WordPress syntax or to put HTML. And they went with HTML, so yeah, you've got the old div class, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a short code would have been better, but apparently it's too much work. Short code is when you do, I'm really running out of time. So, there you go, so, uh, yes, yes, I want to quit this page. So, there you go, well, you all... Which code? Which code? Oh, it's on GitHub, got it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, quickly, a few features I think are relevant for that for uh, for this project. So I had the students use Git and GitHub. So uh, depending on which religion you had, it's probably either very very uh, cruel of me or a very nice feature for them to have because they didn't know anything about it. Uh, for the Digicams, they just had to do use it because uh, there is you know this uh, repository and they couldn't get. Uh, far from it, uh, they had to permanently, because Digicam is uh, developed all the time, they had to be able to pull up uh, information, for, to pull up the commits and never go, th uh, never go far away from the, from the main repo. And for the um, uh, WordPress uh, plugin, they didn't have to basically, but I wanted them to do it. And it was basically a failure because they had something like three commits, which are uh, uh, the, res uh, the uh, summary is just like first commit, and second commit, and when I was submitting open bugs, and there was uh, directly uh, fixing them into the development server, and never committing their code. So, mm -hmm. so I failed on that one. Maybe I should have been stricter, or whatever. But well, they do know how to use Git now, and their code is on GitHub, so it's not that bad. Uh, except for the bugs that I asked them to correct earlier this week when I was testing. Uh, obviously, they fixed it. They fixed the bugs, but they didn't update update it. The repo which is bad. Uh, and I had them use a wiki. Everybody knows what a wiki is, right? <laughs> yes, cool. 
um, the all the coordination was made on the wiki page I, I uh, link uh, earlier so I could sum up but I don't have any time for that and uh, so students we didn't communicate it by email if they had a request I wanted them to do it on a public wiki page so that everybody could look it up if they wanted to I'm not sure that anyone ever looked it up. I think Sumana did actually because she posted on the talk page, hey, you can use the uh, foundation Git repository. And so I said, oh my God, someone actually found this page. <laughs> Weird. Um, Leon told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and because it was, it was in my username, in user space, so I don't really get it. But, um, and also, uh, especially for the uh, WordPress page, uh, why they had their first um, uh, prototype available, I actually sent a few friends, uh, either computer scientists or not, uh, which are active in our chapter blog. So they, bit, they know a bit about WordPress and had them submit bugs and everything. So they actually had people they didn't know testing their code and giving them feedback on an open page. And I think it was a kind of a good experience. Uh, I would have liked them to post on Wikitech for asking for input and everything. Apparently, that was a bit too much to ask for them because it, it was, they were a bit reluctant to have their work examined. Uh, examined before it was finished. They wanted to make, uh, you, you see, they don't want to make, to show a work in progress. They want to show, yeah, uh, because I wanted that, yeah, commit your code. No, not now, it's crappy for now. Uh, we'll clean it up and we'll commit it later. I said, no, you commit it now. Well, they cleaned it up and they'll flood it later, but you know. So outcomes, uh, well, Wikipedia Commons uh, was a bit improved that because we kind of really sucked at machine readable data. And so I, for the WordPress, it has to be. It had to be. This had to be documented, and uh, this is a page I, I wrote about it. So it's lots of interesting information uh, that can be looked up. So actually, the projects helped uh, directly to improve Wikimedia Commons. And I saw the students uh, were taught a few things. Uh, they were taught about Wikimedia Commons, which they didn't know. And now they know how awesome it is. And I know it because they told me, yes, we want your project because we believe it is awesome. And yeah, they're smart guys. They understood what they, want, they, what they had to say to have me uh, take them. Uh, and I, I'm not an expert in Floss development. Uh, probably not, that m probably less than most of the people in this room. But I do know that it's about open collaboration. It's about uh, open repositories. Uh, and I try to make them understand that and maybe now they will become involved in uh, open source software and development. That's wishful thinking, but I'd like to think that uh, they will. Because the reason uh, they told me they took my project, uh, the, all the other projects were uh, helping, uh, you know, for example, research in folding RNA or something. Very, very uh, interesting subjects, but say it will never have the reach that we can have if we develop a plugin for uh, WordPress, which has millions of uh, instances, and that will be used by a community that boasts many, many uh, users. So future, AKA more ID to exploit students, I recommend that you do that because actually it's interesting. The students like it. Yes, they do. And uh, it's fun to do. Uh, so for example, for the WordPress plugin, obviously we want to do more content management system. Every content management system has probably a plugin to, to get pictures from Flickr. And now we got one doing that for comments, which sucks. That's because also we don't have a really good API. That's true. And uh, the lots of the code they wrote was, for example, uh, find license in this page, find author in this page. Uh, that should be done by comments at some point, but it doesn't matter if it's done by an external library. Now, uh, other people can build on it. And category exploration, yes. I look up Jimmy Wells in a bright word. Uh, uh, for, for the moment, it only search on the file name space. It would be good if you actually uh, find that there is a Jimmy Wells category, and you can explore it just instead of only rela rela relying sorry, on the name of the file on the search system, sorry. And for the Digicam plugin, well, first we've got a huge to-do list. For example, it's not checked if, uh, um, if the file already exists on Commons. So we can compute a SHA-1 and uh, just uh, verify it. It's not done, so we've got a crazy file list. And that should be done for every major image software. And if you want to do that, actually, when I presented that on France, a friend said this on Twitter. I would say my grandmother for a plugin for Lightroom. So if you want uh, <laughs> how much his grandmother, uh, <laughs> how much is worth, you can add that. Thank you very much. Hi. 
Um, full disclosure, I'm on the board of uh, KDEV. And I'd love to hear who you worked with in KDE and how, how it was. Um, if you have some, a bit about your experience working with KDE. Uh, how it was to work on KDE software? Mean? Yeah, general with the Digi Digicam team, for example. Uh, actually, uh, I don't think we had any interaction with the KDE people, except, <laughs> sorry about that, <laughs> except for Gilles Collier, which is the main maintainer of, uh, uh, it's, it's all comes down to the fact that the, I, I didn't want to throw them to, you know, hey, this is the main guy which developed KDE. Don't you want to talk with him? Be of your plugins was not like, but we're just the students. We don't want to do that. Uh, uh, but we did have contact with the maintainer of uh, the KP plugins library. Uh, and I forgot to tell that. And uh, we just wrote to him to uh, say, hey, here's this code. If you're interested, there is a patch. And he actually uh, uh, merged it in the main trunk of the Digicam software uh, earlier this week. Awesome. <laughs> We're like, I was kind of wary about that. OK. Um, so uh, yeah, and uh, I was uh, in contact with Guillaume Pommier, which was my uh, KDE expert or something, <laughs> my Digicam okay. expert. So uh, these people don't buy it. Uh, feel free for the next project to get more involved. Uh, sure. <laughs> Jean-Fred. Sumana. Thank you for thank you so much for leading this. I've, it's so great that uh, someone I didn't even know you know stepped up and led more students to uh, exploit slash lead them to um, <laughs> participate in improving uh, the Wikimedia ecology. Um, I just realized that probably you and I should have totally like suggested a joint presentation on this because <laughs> I run the Google Summer of Code program. Yes. I lead the UCOS program. Um, and I'm wondering whether there'd be interest in a Sunday on conference session on ideas for more projects that we could put students on that are not necessarily something that the foundation or one of the chapters is going to pay people to do, but maybe they're small enough, but interesting enough tasks that we could get students to do them. Uh, would you be interested in? Definitely. Who, anyone else here? OK. That's enough. All right, so we'll do it. <laughs> Great. Sure. I'll, I'll announce, I'll, I'll think about it tonight and announce it on Wikimania Alan's schedule. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks. Where do we find the work of plugins? Sorry? Where do we find the work of plugins? Uh, it's on uh, GitHub. Uh, it was linked from, I think so, it I think I put up the URLs online. Or otherwise, if you just uh, look up on mediawiki.org, there is a page with probably Wikimedia Commons on WordPress, and it's all linked from there. Uh, I, I, I'll put it on Twitter later. Sorry? Oh, sorry, mediawiki.org, uh, and the page is called Wikimedia Commons on WordPress, basically. All right, let's move on to the next session then. Over to you. <coughs> Hello. Um, I'm here to speak something I've been working on about eight years now. So translation, it should be simple, fast, and fun, but often it isn't. Um, so I am Nikos Lackström, also known as Nikrabbit or Nikrabbit or however you want to pronounce it. Um, and I work for the Wikimedia Foundation Delocalization team. So about many years ago, I started translating MediaWiki into Finnish. And it was time when MediaWiki was still using CVS, and I had to sub submit patches via Bugzilla. And I found it difficult to maintain the translation, so I kind of scratched my own needs and started writing tools to make it easier. Um, so I think that, in general, open source translation is not fun and simple, and it can be improved. And let me explain why I think so. And after that, I will show, show, show you some solutions and further action points. So let's assume I want to translate some small open source software into my language. Uh, I would need to find the home page, find the page about how to do translations, probably need to sign up for mailing list, introduce <coughs> myself, because if there's a translation team, maybe join one or create a new team. And after that, I can download 
translation files from somewhere, then I can translate them using tools like localize, which I have installed before. And finally, I need to send the translation back via email or bugzilla. And that's quite a many steps if I just want to fix some things and not start maintaining the translation. And usually these kind of projects also have translation maintainers, which who has to approve all translations. And in principle, that would be nice for quality, but in practice, it's not so good because more than once I have seen that the person in this role, it is very busy or is, has lost interest. And my translation has been stuck in some queue for who knows how long. And locally, most, well, not most, but many software projects are using translation platforms like translatewiki.net or Putul or Transifex. Uh, yes, um, and these make it a little bit easier, but the fact is that most of them still don't actually remove the barriers or improve the workflows. And even assuming that you can get as far as start translating something, the translation is still not fun. Because very soon you feel you will find things that are not possible to translate into your language. Here I have two examples. Many software developers still think that they can get away by putting the plural in parentheses. And in many languages that just doesn't work. Um, other example is that there can be uh, split sentences and it's somehow up to the translator to figure out that these are connected and what comes between and if, there's, if there can be anything in between like please log in to continue, please take a photo of the guy sitting next to you to continue, you can translate that properly. Um, we call these legal sentences. And it's usually made worse that there's no hint given to translators that these are related. And the problem of missing these comments is very common. In fact, it's rather the exception than the rule. And here's another example that to translate the word preview, I need to know whether it's uh, a button or title of the page because in Finnish that one is a verb form, other is noun. And at the top you can see that the translation manager has just two different versions. And in the middle there's some documentation that allows me to understand the context and make the correct translation. And well, if this information is not there, it's um, it's uh, well, basically it's waste of time because I need to start digging what's the actual context. And I'm a programmer, but still, if I'm translating something I have not developed myself, it can take hours to understand the code. And well, most translators can't do that. And basically, the only hope is to try to find the message or string from the using the software, which is waste of time too. And or they can ask the developers, and well, they might as well, or they might not as well. Um, and considering that there will be hundreds of translators translating the same string, and they need to figure out the same thing, if that's not waste of time, I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah. So everything like this makes the bunny sad. But there's a good side, which means that there are solutions for these problems and we can improve things, which again is good because we are not going to run out of stuff to translate and by improving things we can get more translations and more translators in and they can do better translations. Um, yeah, so uh, so let's talk about the solutions at MediaWiki. We have this 
uh, very good uh, internalization framework. We support plural forms, grammar forms, gender addressing like referring users as he or she, and uh, lots of other things. So that you really encounter things you can't actually translate properly. Uh, we also do, we as in the local system team at Wikimedia Foundation do also lots of code review and we won't approve commits which introduce new messages without documentation. Um, but sometimes things get past code review because it's not necessarily we who approve it. And well, it's quite hard to get developers to fix things after the fact that they have got into the repository. We usually notice these things at translatewiki.net when translators uh, raise these issues and we would need to spend considerable time to poke the developers until the issues are fixed. And we shouldn't need to remind about these things as often as we do. So, who hasn't heard of translatewiki.net yet? I don't know what heard. Yes or no? Who hasn't? Okay, so you it's a it. website for translators who can translate software like MediaWiki and many other stuff like games like Freeco into their languages. We have uh, many thousands registered translators translating into over 200 languages, almost 300 I think. And well, this started from the scratchy moments, and gradually we got more and more translators using the same software. And tra at Translate Wiki, we have automated most of the boring things like fetching translations and getting them back into the software to the point that if you translate something in MediaWiki or extensions, it will show up in the Wikimedia sites in up the day for the software translate at translatewiki.net. It's longer like a week, but we still try to keep it as short as possible. Um, and it's also a great place if you want to work together with other translators. And uh, like, like I said, uh, issues that get past code review are usually raised in the by translators. Uh, let's look at this again, we have this ask question button which makes it really easy to ask something and we will try to relay this question to the developers and then we will fill the documentation in the middle part so that it's only one translator who needs to waste this time figuring things out and the rest can just read it and do the translation and basically anyone can edit this documentation so if you know something that helps translating you can just do it and help other translators and uh, okay one question there's three choices up there on the, the translation why does it why is there a range of blue dots um on your screen you have a, a green area and there's three choices uh, above the line. And one says 100% match, and then it goes from the blue dots to 87. Yeah, the blue dots are actually links to the other messages which has this translation. So you can go and look at what they are and there's maybe change them. Well, like I said, preview can translate in different ways. So it's two different options to choose from. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's not go into that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's can also be used for that. Um, so, um, I have a question real quick. So I've never been on TransWikiNet before. And um, so you're saying that people that are just English speakers, we could go in there and help fill in the context stuff and we don't, and that would be helpful to you guys? 
I mean, can you just edit the context information to explain like what the button does and all that? Yes, you can do that. Oh, that's great. And in fact, you can even make screen screenshots. That's useful. Um, so where we are, yes. Uh, the nice thing about translatewiki.net is that you can just come in and translate as much or as little as you want, out of it such as that you come like a few times a week and translate some messages because there will be new messages almost every day. Um, and the software behind translatewiki.net is called the Translate Extension, which of course provides nice web interface, although we are currently doing usability review on it and hope to make it even more easy to understand and faster in the sense that we have better keyboard navigation and more focus on the task you are currently doing. And it also supports translating the content of wiki pages themselves. As you might know, we are translating many pages at Meta using this system. And it keeps this man manageable by tracking the changes to the pages so that translators always know that what parts still need translating or updating. And my favorite feature is the proofreading. You can basically proofread any component we have or page or you can do it by reviewing all recent translators translations and you can just click if the translation is good it will accept it and the software will record this so that it will only only show you the translators translations you can review and not other stuff and this is Really nice, for example, doing collaborative proofreading on some page. And we have some user documentation at that link. Um, then there's some problems we haven't still solved. Maybe someone else has, I don't know. And it basically uh, is about the quality of the text you are translating. So they are usually lots of bad English because developers speak different languages and there's usually lots of jargon which is not even the end users of the software don't understand it and well translators translators don't either and it's also related to this that there's no terminologies which would like uh, collect all the terms used and define them so you might see username, user account, with spaces or without. Uh, the translator needs to figure out whether they mean the same thing or not. But with terminologies, they could easily see it's the same thing. Or even better, the developers would always use the same words or terms. And it will also put the terms into context to how they relate to each other. Each another. Um, and I'll, it will also help transition memories. And for now, we have the transition memories and search to little help with this problem, but it's not really a solution. It will never be. Um, so, just a few examples. User base is a key DA MediaWiki installation, which contains documentation of many key DA programs. They are using the translate extension to translate the help pages. And they have almost 700 pages for translation. And that's lots of stuff which they couldn't do without the extension keeping track of what needs translating. Um, and they have really helped to fix the page translation feature that, well, to make it as useful as it is. And well, if you are a translator and you run out of stuff to translate at translatewiki.net, which is hard, <laughs> you can always go have a look at this site. Um, I'm also organizing translator sprints into Finnish. Uh, earlier this year, I did one for GNOME, and now we are currently running another sprint for the upcoming Key Day 4.9 release. And 
for the key day we have something like 20 200,000 strings and we want some scalable tissues and it's also good testing for the new transistor memory I have been working on and we have had some nice results we have translated almost 10,000 new messages and most of them have also been proofread by someone else than the translator and the uh, general feedback has been that mm, proofreading is really nice feature and most requested feature is better search so that if you for example want to fix translation of certain expression in all messages that's not easy to do or if you just want to locate some bad translation you have seen somewhere that's also a bit hard um, that's the address to the wiki but if you don't speak Finnish you probably won't understand much um, so what's the problem we have solutions but most of the translation around open source is not using them so it would be nice if we like could spread the information and knowledge about these solutions and if you are a translator you should really demand proper tools proper workflows and message documentation not just guess what's the meaning and of course i'm also glad to know if there's other solutions that can help us to improve especially in the terminology side of things um, yes thank you You mentioned that the KDE uh, documentation, there's a lot of material to translate. Um, how do they present that material to these new tools uh, in such a way that you get the translation strings and you can feed it back in in the same way that you're feeding back into the MediaWiki uh, source? Mm, I'm not sure I understand the question. How, how do they present you the information that they need to translate and then you can plug that back into uh, either their source control system or what, what's the interface for doing this with projects other than MediaWiki? Um, so at user base they are translating documentation which is inside the wiki. And they are using the translate extension which has the web interface for translation. So they have a dashboard like this, where it lists all the pages which need to be translated. So they they are using uh, wiki software for their own documentation and have installed the translation plugin there in yes. order to get you the material. Okay, that was the, the bit I was confused on. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sibel Maasland. I'm product manager localization. I work with Nicholas uh, uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, one of the things that you uh, described still needs to be done is improve internationalization in many other products than MediaWiki where internationalization is pretty okay. What kind of strategies can you identify to, to, to make those things better? Um. Well, first we would need to have like good IATM frameworks and well we can do everything but for JavaScript we have this project Milkshake which is going to implement all the features that the MediaWiki IATM currently has in a library that is reusable in any project using JavaScript for solving text. But for other languages there's not anything we are working on. So, I don't know, <laughs> but in any case, they always can use the translation platforms like TranslateWiki.net or Poodle or whatever 
to make it easier for translators at least to get started and do their stuff, even though the messages themselves might be. It, it's not possible to do all the things that we can do in MediaWiki, but at least they can have it easier to translate. Hello. Uh, I'm a MediaWiki software developer and stuff. Um, uh, you know, speaking of the, the jargon and unclear language, I never know how, how clear my uh, uh, text is or the descriptions in the, the times when I put in descriptions. Um, maybe there should be a way for translators to, uh, to be able to notify the, the developer who's uh, listed for some specific extension or feature so that they can just get an email saying someone has found this te piece of text unclear, something like that? Um, yes, that would be ideal. Right now, the questions which are created with the Ask Question button, they go into one page in the translate.wiki.net, uh, which is then proced processed so that uh, whatever software is in question, they will be moved into that discussion page. Uh, but then we don't have clear process how to actually add the developers of that software to actually process those issues. Yeah, thanks for asking that, uh, Jaron. Um, well, I can basically say you would know uh, if it's inf insufficient. I would let you know or someone else would let you know. <laughs> so thank you for doing it right. <laughs> There's some more questions here. Uh, so uh, I, I've been in, involved with Translate Wiki for quite a while now, uh, but somehow uh, I never bothered to ask this. D do you have any estimation of uh, the number of translators that are there in Translate Wiki? All, all, the trans all, the, all the active translators to all the languages. Um, I have this memory that we have about 500 active translators per month. Uh, I'm not sure if it's correct. Maybe Sibrand will know. <laughs> yeah. Actually, n uh, not a question. I uh, remember uh, some four or five years ago translating uh, language hr.php and uh, it was easier uh, translating on beta wiki and uh, now translate and now translate wiki is uh, i have to say beautiful uh, suggestions uh, which were not there before i need, need everything to type myself now i can uh, if if it's possible if uh, it, if it applies i, I can just click and uh, <coughs> after uh, 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 after plural uh, template, uh, now uh, last addition gender. <coughs> uh, I think translate wiki is uh, what we needed <laughs> at the at the, uh, at the beginning, but I'm happy that we have it now. Thank you, yes. really thank you. <laughs> Anything else? At some time I was involved in another, another translation project and I realized that among the numerous translators of this particular project, there was a varied variety of how they translated certain core concepts of this particular software. I mean, all of them was grammatically correct and there were correct translations, but as a user of this particular software, it was inconsistent. Is there any tool in Translate Wiki to define what, what the fundamental concepts are to be called before you actually go in and start writing whole sentences containing these words? Um, the short answer is no. 
like I talked in terminologies, we don't have anything specific f for that yet, I hope. Uh, I, I was just checking the website actually, Translate Wiki, and I, I saw the you know the projects using TranslateWiki.net. I mean, not all of them, I guess, right? I mean, uh, I, I saw the, for example, Wikipedia, mobile, but not the regular one, I guess, right? As in, as in the regular Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Because recently, I, I mean, I'm translating a lot. You know, I mean, not just only the, you know, like Wikipedia, but you know, it's it's. I mean, I, when I heard that one, I mean, I feel really happy because you know, recently I you know, translated Wikimania's um, main page and this case the program everything. It it took for me you know like maybe like two or three days to translate that. It's it's, it's really hard for me to make it. You know, I mean. I mean I, I'm really happy to hear that. Actually, I I, I saw that. Actually, it's 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 re I guess it's gonna be really helpful for us. Yeah. Which language uh, Turkish. Yeah. Uh, coming from a position of complete ignorance about a lot of this stuff, um, are you? familiar with and is there any opportunity to collaborate with uh, the people working on Duolingo? Um, have, are you aware of that? Oh, okay, great. <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rob Lanfear. I'm the uh, Director of Platform Engineering at Wikimedia Foundation. And so let's see here. Um, and uh, this presentation is up here at this, at this place if you want to look around. It's pretty complicated uh, um, SVG diagrams. So in fact, there's, there it is an overview right there. Um, and I'm going to talk about who we are as a team and, uh, and uh, what we do. So. Um, starting off, um, pardon me one second while I get, fumble around with the AV a little bit more, because um, uh, I haven't done that enough already. Um, so, um, so basically, yeah, I want to walk through um, several bits of this diagram and also talk about uh, um, what it, each of the individual teams does. So first, um, who platform engineering is and um, we are in relation to so this this is the this is the whole diagram and it's kind of an explanation of what we did last year and what we're doing next year. Um, so platform engineering is one part of the engineering department. Um, this is not 100% accurate, but it's probably close enough for purposes of this explanation. Basically, we have a number of engineering teams that do um, feature development work um, on MediaWiki. And we have an operations group that manages the, the sort of underlying operating system and third-party software um, for um, keeping the site just running generally. So they, they're the ones that um, deal with configuring Apache, configuring routers, configuring all of that stuff. And then um, what the platform engineering team does is the stuff that's kind of in the middle zone there. So it's MediaWiki specific stuff. Um, and uh, the, um, as well as the release process, and we also um, work with the engineering community, and we do analytics work as well, um, sort of analytics infrastructure work. So um, that's, that's um, this group here. So um, the, we've got several different teams, mo uh, and lots of people who don't yet have pictures up on the staff page. It was uh, um, quite a scramble to get all of these pictures together here. So. 
Um, this is the MediaWiki core group. They are, they're the ones that do a lot of the work um, uh, as associated with uh, deploying the software and that sort of thing. And we do get a lot of help from um, uh, folks in other parts of the organization as well, like Roan sitting in the back of the room, for example. Um, uh, but, uh, um, uh, the, but this team is uh, uh, largely comprises MediaWiki developers. We've got uh, the data analytics team, which who we're um, building up right now, we've got um, Eric Zakta, who's been with the foundation for a very, very long time, um, and then we've recently hired Andrew Otto and David Schoonover, and we're also looking to hire a uh, JavaScript uh, and UI engineer as well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and um, and then the uh, engineering uh, community group, uh, led by Sumina here, and uh, Guillaume was here earlier, um, and uh, and we're we've got several open positions here. So please, um, if you're interested in doing some of this work, uh, let us know. There's uh, um, uh, several open positions um, in the group, and I won't go over all of them right now unless there's interest uh, in the Q and A session. Um, and then finally, we also have a, 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 a nascent quality assurance group. Uh, we recently hired Chris, uh, Chris McMahon to be um, our QA lead, and we're looking to hire somebody else to help him out with uh, um, automation tasks. Um, and, uh, and there's a number of activities that, you know, for example, we're also hiring a volunteer QA coordinator and a bug wrangler in Sumina's group as well. So we're, we, we are going to have quite a QA focus in the, in the next year, but I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, so that is the group. Now it is time for a story. And oh my god, these uh, slides did, uh, uh, of course, my, my last minute editing um, has come back to bite me one second here. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, nobody's just going to get up and leave based on uh, uh, that, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what happened here, by the way. Um, uh, um, well, I'm, I'm basically using a new... Um, uh, it, it, it kind of a, a nice uh, tool inside of Inkscape to do this presentation, and um, the I'm one got. Nice one. Everyone gather around that man. <laughs> yeah. You want another laptop, bro? <laughs> All I got to do is hit save on this, and I will be good. All right. Save. All right. And. And now, uh, F11, F11, and reload. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, so it's story time now. And I really needed a slide just for that, didn't I? <laughs> Trust me, I needed this for the other ones. Um, so, yeah, so basically, um, I want to tell, talk a little bit about um, uh, an event that happened um, over a year ago that, that, that kind of led to a lot of the work that we're doing today. Um, so this is uh, February 7th, 2011. We made a, an, and this was pretty late at night for those of us on the US West Coast, we had actually achieved something pretty big, which was we had gotten the review queue for the 117 release of MediaWiki down to zero. So what this graph means is that every revision in MediaWiki is, um, uh, is reviewed um, by, by another developer. And at the time, it was mostly Tim Starling doing it, although we, had, we changed our review policies at this point to allow other developers to do it. And this was the point at which we had, we had branched MediaWiki in December, so we were cheating a little bit here. Br branching means that we basically froze development on the trunk, uh, or froze development on 117. We let, let people continue to commit stuff into trunk, but that would go into 118 and beyond. So what this, was, what this represents is the 117 release. We'd finally reviewed everything, and we could deploy it now. And so this was a major milestone for us. Um, and it would have been 
What's that? <laughs> and it would have been time to celebrate, except we had planned to deploy MediaWiki um, <laughs> at, about, at 11 o'clock <laughs> that night, and it was 11.30, and we had finally gotten done with this six-month task at, at, at 11.30. So, um, so we're already doing pretty good. And, and I, I call this a deployment window here, and that's sort of out of habit. We didn't really, we said we were going to start 11, and we didn't know when we were going to be able to get done. But, you know, we were thinking like four hours is probably going to be enough. Um, should be fine. Um, and uh, so, um, so, like I said, we got done with code review at 1130. Um, in San Francisco, and as obviously other times, Roan was still in the Netherlands. He was very heavily involved in this one. Um, and uh, we also had Tim Starling in, in Australia. We had um, uh, a, a, a tester working for us in um, Sri Lanka. So we had an international team working on this. Um, but we got done at 11.30, which was all good. It took us about a couple hours to get the code staged because there was a lot of, you know, like it was more complicated getting the code put in place than we than we had anticipated it would be. So, by the time uh, by the time that was that process was all done, um, it was 1:45 a.m. And now what that meant was that the code was up on test.wikipedia.org. So we actually had it there and we could play around with it and you know make sure that it was working well and everything. And it wasn't. Um, so we had to do some bug fixing and you know, we like find things like at 2.20 a.m. we were still kind of bug fixing and we realized, oh gosh, we didn't make a schema change to the database and that's kind of a big deal. What are we gonna do? I guess we hack around this. I, I don't know, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out later. So yeah, there was some frantic coding to try to figure this out. Roan's looking at me puzzled. Yes, I looked through the IRC logs to piece all of this together. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, um, then at 2.45 a.m., we discovered that um, the, um, we have a, in doing diffs on Wikipedia, um, uh, we don't use the sort of standard one that if you download MediaWiki, um, you, 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 you know, you're using a PHP version. We have actually a compiled C version. Um, and we realized at this point that we, we needed to deploy um, a new version of the binaries, and that was not an easy process. Like, that was kind of a big deal for our operations group. In fact, it wasn't probably going to happen at 2.45 a.m. Um, at this point. So it was like, okay. so. So uh, never mind on that. We'll figure out how to hack that out. Um, and then, so things progress, and yeah, now it is 5.08 a.m., and it's like, yay, we're finally ready to deploy. We think we've got everything all figured out, and we deploy, and we push the code out there. And what happens at that point is, well, you know, the load on the system goes up, and that's normal. That, that happens on, on a deployment. That's no big deal. You know, the caches need to get repopulated and everything. It's not going down though. It's uh, it's kind of staying up there, and it's it's um, yeah, things are not looking good for Wikipedia at this point. Um, uh, basically, ten minutes went by, and then twenty minutes, then half hour, and more. And the Apache um, web servers were just they were basically falling over at this point. And we said, yeah, we're going to have to abort. So we roll back at. Um, 5.38, and, and um, I'm, I think it was Roan who basically said, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to work on this a while longer, because he was in the Netherlands. It wasn't like, it wasn't some crazy time. It was like his afternoon. Um, so so he, does a, he does a bunch of more work on this, and um, he says, ah, I think I got it. And at, um, at 8.30 a.m., deployment attempt number two, and the same thing happens. <laughs> And so then rollback attempt number two happens at uh, 9, 9 um, 13, and that's when we decide we need a totally different strategy. And we did end up coming up with a different strategy. Obviously, we're not still on MediaWiki 116, but that's a lot of the work that we've been doing in the past year has been to make it so that this doesn't happen uh, again when we deploy software. So. 
Um, and that's what a lot of the work of the MediaWiki core team has been, is to, is, is to do the sort of infrastructure components necessary to, to, make, this, uh, to make it possible for us to not just um, do more reliable deployments, but also do them faster, um, make, the, make the review process happen uh, faster, make the uh, uh, basic maintenance, uh, it, you know, and they're also been doing lots of work on basic maintenance of the system and, you know, paying down technical debt. So just getting rid of all of the cruft in the system, and I, I shouldn't say getting rid of all the cruft in the system, it's uh, just like there's no end of translations, there's no end of cruft for us to clean up in MediaWiki. Um, and as well as uh, uh, some, some, we've done some um, initial performance work um, in um, it last year, and we've got a lot more planned in the in the coming year. So, um, on the MediaWiki one uh, MediaWiki release process, everybody knows like the relationship between like uh, MediaWiki and Wikipedia, the site, right? The anybody need an explanation there? Okay, so. Um, how many people know what version of MediaWiki is actually running on the site right now? A few people? Um, well, it's, it's MediaWiki 1.20 WMF 7, which is a little bit off the screen here, um, is what's running. Um, the MediaWiki 1.18 and 1.19 um, deployment processes went very similarly to our current deploy, or, or to, to past deployment processes, which meant that we would do a whole bunch of development work over the course of a half year or so, and then we would push that version out um, onto, uh, onto Wikipedia and all of the sister sites, and then we would create a tarball for distribution to other folks that use MediaWiki. Um, and that process held true for 118 and 119, and during that time, we did, we laid the groundwork for the 120 cycle, which is what we're in the middle of now, which is we've decoupled the process of releasing MediaWiki from the process of um, uh, deploying it to the website. So that now um, we're not, we're um, pushing um, new versions of the software to, the, to uh, Wikipedia every two weeks. And, um, and a couple of big changes have made that possible. Um, so, in oh, sorry, uh, this is this is where we're. You are here, um, uh, but uh, the the two big process, two big things that have made this possible. One of them is something we um, internally called HET deploy. It stands for heterogeneous deploy, which means that different wikis can run a different version of the software during the 117 cycle. That um, that wasn't possible, and well, at least it wasn't possible until Rowan hacked up something to make it possible for that deployment. Possible. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, possible in air quotes. Um, uh, and uh, and dur but during the 118 cycle is when we actually made that sort of a standard tool set um, in in our library. And then um, and then. 119 was all about a couple of things for at least for the MediaWiki core group. It was about um, uh, truly cleaning out that huge backlog of, of, of stuff to review, as well as um, uh, as well as getting us ready to migrate from Subversion, our old version control system, to Git. Um, and um, we instituted a process change at the same time as well. Whereas before um, we um, had people commit their code, and then we would, and our code review system was all about um, uh, reviewing it after it had been committed and after other people had already built on what they had done. And so a lot of the problems that we've had in past deploys have not just been in um, those cases where, like, we've needed to back out some of the software, uh, or, you know, some changes that, like, we realize, eh, we shouldn't have done that. But it, but it's also been those cases where somebody had done something that was so inextricably bound in with the rest of everything by that point that we basically kind of had to just power through and um, uh, figure out how to make it work. And sometimes that process uh, takes a little bit more time as well. So now 
um, nothing actually gets merged in until it's been reviewed. And so far, that, that process has made it possible for us to deploy pretty like clockwork. Every couple of weeks, we have a rolling cycle where we roll it out to a few small wikis first, and then we gradually roll it out to more and more wikis until finally it's on all of Wikipedia um, at the end of a two-week cycle, and then we go back and do it again. And we budget only two hours for each deployment, um, and typically only take about half hour, 45 minutes um, to do the actual deployment. So it's nothing like the old 117 deployment process. It's, it's pretty routine. We have, you know, basically Sam Reed practically does it by himself now um, uh, during that time. So, yes? We went from Git to Subversion? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? <laughs> Helps to have some proofreading. Thank you for proofreading. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, some other um, some other things that we've done though. Um, so uh, it, you might have caught um, Ben Hartern's talk earlier today about the op, uh, about the migration to Swift, which is a new file storage system. Um, I'll just give you a brief uh, 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 overview of it. It's one thing that uh, uh, Aaron Schultz from my group has been collaborating with, uh, with Ben and, and the other folks in operations on. So it's basically taking our media storage, which right now sits on two NFS servers, one for original images and one for thumbnails, um, and moving them to a distributed cluster of machines that we can add to easily. And if one of them goes down, it doesn't cause a problem. Because right now, if the originals um, server goes down on, um, uh, uh, on Wikipedia and you know, on Commons, that's it. Like, we don't have images for a while. Um, what's that? Well, we're not, we're not doing a content delivery network. What we're doing is, I mean, we basically serve as our own CDN here. Um, but um, what we're doing is uh, having a distributed file storage system. So it's more like Amazon S3, except we're running our own open source version of it. Um, and so the, and there's yet, a, not only is it a single point of failure, but as you can see from these graphs here, um, we are pretty close to running out of space. Um, on the thumbnails server, we can kind of delete things and play some tricks there to make it work. But um, the originals takes um, uh, it, once that one fills up, we're kind of done. And you can see we're we're getting close. Um, so um, so that's that's what's going on there. We're also doing some initial performance work, and I'm going to race through this stuff because I'm I'm really low on time here. We've got um, so um, one of the things that we've been working on is hip hop. Um, uh, we did a little bit of work. Hip Hop is a PHP compiler. So what it does is it takes um, PHP code, compiles it down to um, C code, which runs a lot faster, and um, and then you can deploy that and have the site run a lot faster. And that was that that was uh, we had initially planned to make that a big performance push, but as it turns out. Um, uh, we needed to defer that because one of the things that Facebook has done is announced a new project that, that actually not only gives us the performance benefits, but also doesn't have to make us have to turn our whole deployment infrastructure on its head. So we're going to put that off um, for now. So um, another thing is, but what we're doing instead is we started in on the Lua project to actually replace template syntax with um, uh, uh, with an, an, a real programming language. Lua is um, a, a fantastic little programming language um, kind of designed for embedding um, uh, be embedded applications, which means it's a, a very small, um, uh, has a very small memory footprint and has all sorts of controls to make it possible to, um, uh, to sort of control on a per um, uh, a per run, per script basis, how much resources get used. So, ideally, we'll get to a state where um, are people trying to look around my monitor. Is that what's going on here? Um, we'll we'll get to a state where um, instead of using wiki text for everything, of pros and layout and all of that stuff, we'll we'll use you know we'll we'll have wiki data. The wiki data folks will will get are working on making it possible so that we can actually use a a, a, a language for um, data um, on um, uh, uh, 
for, for the data applications. And then for logic, we'll actually have a real programming language, um, which will be fantastic. So um, that is a lot of the work that we're doing there. We've uh, got the data analytics folks. Um, and I'm going to get super racy now as far as uh, just getting through a lot of this stuff. Um, they're working on a new version of our report card, um, which if you go to stats.wikimedia.org, you'll be able to see um, the, um, the, the result of their work, um, just basically making it a lot uh, nicer to, to look through like our page view statistics and uh, editor statistics and that sort of thing. They're also working on um, uh, a... a um, uh, a new analytics cluster um, based on Hadoop that is is uh, um, is going to make it so that we can generate a lot of the a lot of the information in real time instead of just publishing monthly reports as we do today. Um, so, um, and we've got the engineering community group, and I can really race through this one because tomorrow at 10:30 a.m., um, Sumana, Guillaume, and I are going to be talking a lot more about what this group does. Um, uh, just a couple of highlights. Last year, they did the um, um, uh, worked on a chapter for the uh, book called *The Architecture of Open Source*, which is a fantastic history of um, the MediaWiki development, as well as like a good architectural overview. So, uh, check that out. And then, um, uh, but you know, but we're working on um, uh, in the coming year, we're going to be working on recruiting not just developers, but we're going to be recruiting across the spectrum of QA, documentation, and so on. And in a room full of, of Wikimedians, I think it's really important to highlight documentation volunteers. Like, we really need those, too. Um, so um, that's, that's uh, a, a few areas that uh, the engineering community team is working on. Um, also, um, a big focus on QA in the coming year as well um, with online testing events and uh, um, coordinating bug squads and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, finally, of course, there is quality assurance, um, where right now the focus has been on continuous integration and our beta cluster, um, which is what that what that is is a, um, a a test install of MediaWiki as it's just about to be deployed to the website. So it's a great place to actually test. Um, uh, what the software that's going to be going out to Wikipedia in the next month or so. Um, and we're also going to work on like organizing bug squashes and that sort of thing so that uh, it's not going to be just an entirely unstructured, hey, here's this wiki, go test it. Um, and um, yeah, and we're also doing a lot in the, in the field of automation. And uh, so that is uh, pretty much it. And uh, uh, if you want to ask me questions about any of that other stuff, um, looks like you're probably going to have to ha find me afterwards because we're just about out of time here. But um, the that uh, image is up, or the the thing uh, presentation I was racing through is up there. And uh, um, if we do have any time or patience for questions, I can take a nap. You said uh, on different uh, wikis now. Uh, uh, can be run in different versions. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how to say? Uh, divided by uh, data ser uh, databases, S1, S2, S3, or by uh, languages, or uh, what kind of? Uh um, each individual wiki. So, so it's each not language. entirely. It's not entirely open, but each individual wiki can run basically one of two versions. So we've only got so much, uh, so basically what, what our limit is, is that we can only run so many versions simultaneously. Um, in fact, so many is two versions simultaneously, but that's still enough for us to do sort of a gradual rollout. Um, but, we, um, but we basically, when we roll out, we roll out to um, a test wiki first, and then we roll out to mediawiki.org, and then we, we, can, like, we can go down to the individual wiki level. Thanks. Can I plug our talk tomorrow again? Yes, at 10.30 tomorrow morning, we have a talk uh, called Transparency and Collaboration in Wikimedia Engineering. If you are curious about how to learn more about this stuff, request new things, tell us that things suck, etc. Um, and hear more about things that are going to happen uh, so that you know before they affect you in your community, please come. 
Also, if you heard stuff Rob said and didn't understand it, I have a talk tomorrow afternoon called, What Does That Mean? Engineering jargon in plain English. So you can come to that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am going to miss tomorrow's thing because I am volunteering at that time as well. But, um, <laughs> um, again, I, I actually mentioned this issue earlier today. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, think about, I think it was about a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. um, the development developers decided to move from Unicode 5 to 5.1. Uh -huh. Nobody decided to actually tell our community that you're going to do that. And that actually caused the entire wiki front pages to go page not found. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I honestly don't remember that move um, myself. Nicholas uh, Seaburn, do, I, I, do, you, do you have more background on that one, the move from Unicode 5 to 5.1? I mean, if, if there is a change for... Um, See, I'm, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm struggling to even remember, like, uh, that, that being a, a, a sort of a crisis or anything, or even a, th even a thing. Like, I don't, I don't, I didn't even, like, like, it wasn't, it wasn't like one of those things where we, like, somebody from on high said, we're moving to Unicode 5.1, and I think it was like, maybe somebody, like, checked in something and nobody on the dev staff noticed on it. No, I don't think it was... Yeah, that was my Wikipedia, Malala Wikipedia. Thank you. <laughs> we did not create a drama there. We uh, you basically took out the whole uh, front page of the all individual project that was out there. I mean, we all we asked was okay, the front page. Yeah, the main page. So that's what I was asking. That do we have a process by which you either you tell communities or you go to individual page wikis and identify if it was broken or not. Yes. Yeah, so this is this is actually um, a, a great topic for for the 1030 thing. Like we're actually, and it's one of the things that we're um, um, uh, that that we're working on, like an ambassadors uh, program to make to to make sure that people actually know um, what we're doing when we do it as best as we can. I mean, you can't communicate something you don't know. So um, there will always be things that slip through the cracks, but. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, the other thing is, I you know, if I, how, did it take a while f to finally figure out who to talk to on that one? No, I mean, we immediately came to the developer um, or, uh, Wikimedia dev, and uh, mm -hmm. um, someone actually found us a quick solution that mm -hmm. uh, write about to do a null edit on all the pages that you have on your Wikipedia, and we did that for the entire projects, mm -hmm. and we we did that for each individual project. It took about a week before we recovered from that uh, issue. Wow, okay, how long ago was this? Should have been a couple of years ago. It's, it, it okay. Look, look, at, look at when you migrated from 5.0 to 5.1 on Unicode version. Right okay, yeah, I mean, I think these days. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm personally making a habit of when we do these deployments is I actually go and poke all of the home pages on all of the wikis um, uh, when we do a, a rollout. And I just have that as part of my sort of standard ritual when we're doing a deployment now so that I at least see the home. Because there have been times where I know we've taken out the home, like we've taken out a wiki and not you know, not noticed it, and was like, oh God, you know, so like when we rolled out flag revs on English Wikipedia, we took out Hebrew wiki, wiki source, and like, it took a while for them to finally find us, and it was like, oh, God, you know, I felt terrible about it, but it was like, it was this, this thing where we just weren't poking the home pages of all of the different projects. And actually, the, the only difference here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, <laughs> uh, just, just to add to the point, I mean, the main issue was, even at that, even even now, that is a small Wikipedia, and mm -hmm. we are trying to get a lot of editor engagement, and we are trying working a lot on bringing people into the wiki, and that actually set us back by a little because of that issue. Well, I think one of the other things we haven't had to do this yet in the two-week cycle. Just I I I think what. Well, by the way, uh, the other thing I can say, though, is that one of the huge benefits of the two-week cycle, we haven't had to do this yet, um, and I hope we never do, but 
um, one of the huge benefits of the two-week cycle is it's relatively trivial to like just say, oh, scrub this one and go back. And like in the case where you're describing, where it's like we have, you know, this this thing where we broke a whole bunch of wikis, we just roll back to the previous version, and it's no big deal. It's like two weeks of work that we can postpone a little bit, as opposed to like I think we want probably ended up powering through because it was like, you know, it might have been the 117 deployment for all we know, and you saw like the the whole drama associated with that. When it was just like, oh, we took out a few wikis. Well, we better fix those as soon as we fix. I mean, it was a huge, huge process getting 117 out. Let me let me just like, I want to say from my perspective as engineering community manager, what happened to your wiki was not okay. It's really unhappy, unfortunate. I'm you have my regrets. Um, I wasn't here yet. Um, our aim is. Um, before we ever do a deployment, everything's on this beta site that's like these replica sandboxes. We send out a note to the Wikitech ambassadors group so that they every single wiki has people testing it and poking it on that replica site so we know if something breaks ahead of time. This is part of the QA testing thing we're trying over the next year. And then, once we have the new deployment, as you said, like it's extremely fast to roll things back if we only notice problems then because it's a larger audience. Does that kind of help you see that there is kind of going to be a process in place to prevent future problems like that? Great. There has to be some by hand and then some automated. So. It sounds like your regression testing is a million monkeys out there sort of poking at this. What do you have to automate the regression testing of a rollout? Yeah. Um, well, I, we're working on it, right? I mean, we've got, we've got like, you saw my, my QA team, right? It's like one guy who's been working for us for about three months now, I think. And uh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. It's just, I mean, so there's not that many people to, to do the work, so yeah. I'm not, yeah, but it's fair to say that up to this point, there has literally been no code for regression testing of rollouts, and that's something you're working on now. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's unit testing of the code. Like, there, there is there is a nascent unit testing framework that that is in place as well. Um, and but in terms of like in a, you know full scale integration testing, um, you know testing like the, if all of the functionality works together, like that's something we have practically no automation on. Um, we're looking to get some automation on it um, in the coming year, and, th and that that is exactly what that person uh, that we hire is going to be working on with uh, with Chris McMahon. And, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Two weeks of code. That basically, so so we so the code, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair, <laughs> right, yeah. We just roll back, and it's not like and not, the code doesn't go away. It's just we, we fumble around, we figure out what happened, and then we then we try again. Mm -hmm. So one of so basically one of the things I've, I've been very active on Wikitech, get evangelizing this point of view, which is that like any change that we do, at least for a period of time, needs to be backwards compatible as far as the database is concerned. So um, we're which that hasn't been the case before, um, you know developers who check in code that like required a schema change um, in order to work and now we're um, um, it, there has to be like a really sort of compelling reason why um, uh, that for that to be true now before or else we just roll back that code yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right thank you very much folks thank you very much